Joker, and then you throw Clay Fontenot in there, who's my stunt double. To this like raring to go because um, we had discussed this early on and we started our preparation way before and you know we formulated everything that we really want to try to get across on this and when it comes to me designing things for him it's like a 50 50 collaboration on things i set it up and design it for the things that he can do and the things that he wants to do in terms of the fights First of all, introduced a whole new way of looking at martial arts in the West that had a lot of influence from the East, but it had a very urban American take on it. The way the camera was used was to almost very valetic dance around uh, the fights, dance around in a choreographic way with the fights. And we took this to an extreme on the second one because I wanted to. Uh, through the movie, uh, have every action sequence be different from the one before. And we choreograph the camera in different ways too. Wesley and I get together to go over the action sequences that are coming up and so that we know that we're not gonna duplicate anything or, you know, just bring it to a different level each time, each battle. And on top of that, we wanted to do something different than The Matrix or Crouching Tiger. We wanted to go back to more hard-hitting style of action, you know? Uh, because I think people, the moment you see, you know, Cameron Diaz fly in the air and, and, uh, and you know she's incapable of flying in the air and, and kicking five guys, uh, you realize that it's done with wires and uh, I think that uh, that wire foo style fighting was a little worn down. I mean, Charles Angels was great, but it was almost satirical. And I think that was kind of the nail in the coffin. So we went for a non wire foo style of fighting. <laughs> some stuff with the L cam, which means liberated camera, and fusing some digital uh, manipulation of the stuff with the real stunt. And we go with some of the actions to places and following the characters in ways that a normal camera would not do. And the fusion seems very good to me.
because our visual effects is like huge and our action sequences are going to be 10 times better than the first one with our fight sequences that we have coming up it's he has multiple um, attackers coming at him so things like that where it's an opportunity to really show off the blade sword but I think we're going to go somewhere else and uh, somewhere completely different you know everybody's expecting him to do this thing so that's where I have to pull a rabbit out of my hat for some new variety you know Wesley listens to everybody's ideas, uh, the, choreo the two choreographers, the visual stuff I want to do, and then uh, he does what, what I call, he blade, blade, <laughs> brings the bladeness in. We call it keeping it funky. Every time you would say a move, you would, uh, for, example, for example, propose a move, he would say, that's, that's not uh, a blade way to do it. What if we do this? It's got to be funky. And he would come up with absolutely really great ideas. And he's a guy that is, aside from everything, he has one thing in common from, with me. We are both fans. I mean, the guy knows the Donnie Yen movies, the guy knows all the Hong Kong movies. It's better to work with a director who is a fan of action genres than not, because then you can explain things to him and he'll get it quicker. stuff is that you don't have to worry about subtlety. You know, you can just, I mean, it, it's an element, but you can kind of really have fun playing with timbre and sound and, and rhythm, and, um, and you can make your scores bombastic. And um, from a compositional standpoint, it's a lot of fun because, you know, that's the type of stuff when you're trained um, as a 20th century music and everything, it's, um, it's really sound exploration. century composers or whatever and the language isn't that new but I think there are new ways of approaching stuff which is that's why I do this you know I, if I felt like I was doing the same thing all the time I wouldn't be interested in it I may as well you know like bricks or something I usually don't like to work on the movie too early because scripts, start working from scripts, it's really deceiving. We're not making music for a screenplay. And especially a movie like this, which is so stylized, reading the script, I had no idea the movie would look the way it does. And if I had written the music based on the script, it'd be a different score.
actually on this, Guillermo asked me to write some melodies for him when he was shooting. When I got back, I, I got a rough cut of the movie. I started putting some ideas and themes together. And then uh, I met with Guillermo. He came over to my studio, played him uh, my ideas, and um, just took off from that. You know, I, we spotted the movie late, so I just sort of you know, put music where I thought it should go. It turned out the music is like... In, I uh, maybe it's five minutes and don't have music in it, <laughs> but um, so it was pretty easy to spot in that respect. But you know, I sort of had a sense. I've worked with Guillermo before. I sort of had a sense of the type of um, emotionally the type of things that he was going for in the scenes. <laughs> It all depends on how the movie does. It will not come out at the same time as the soundtrack. No. It's going to four or five minutes. But I mean, they, I think they're paying 15 minute increments, so maybe they'll at least put 45 minutes of music on it. Yeah. Well, what I'm asked, what I told him is that it be, what would be nice is to, to have an interview, as Liner notes, an interview with both of us. Yeah. You know, where we just discuss. And you know, some of the cues. How it, subtle it was? No, no, no. You know what is funny? Is this is the. Uh, like, I remember our first meeting on Mimic. Yeah. Nothing that we discussed came through. <laughs> you know, nothing at all. The only thing you're talking about weirdos. Yeah, the, exactly. Uh, you know, the thing that you yeah, wrote yeah. for the as a Mimic sound. Yeah. And then I play, I play it, I remember. What the fuck is that? Get rid of that shit. No, but what I was saying is, in this case, whatever we discussed came through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the combining of choro and orchestral and right. techno? Yeah. It worked. I know. So, you know, it's one of those rare occasions where we can be, yeah. you know, talking about it. Yeah. We don't discuss scenes a lot, like the meaning of the scene and what music needs to do, that kind of stuff. Um, as I mentioned before, like the Guillermo will say, uh, Give me some butt willies here or something, you know. And you'll get all the butt willies and all the little things from at one o'clock? Yeah. Well, are we gonna go out and grab a bite or should we plan a scene here? I'm gonna go and have a meeting. All right. Once the concept is there and we have a, a language together and I play him stuff, it's um, pretty much a question of, uh, you know, if I can amp something up or get, you know, get out of the way for this. It's more, comes to that to almost more technical. Do, do you will do something more open for the love theme, no? <clears throat> I can do that now. Something big. Something big, I think it's... No, no, like, like no, what I mean, minimal. But yeah. something like, uh, that is also not sappy. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you just should be non-sappy, right? Yeah. I'm thinking the way we should do it is like, everybody play the melodic line, slow, and harmonics, and strings only. Yeah, strings only. And get rid of all the woodwinds and brass. And maybe opening stuff, that, mm, 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 that yeah. portal stuff. If you get rid of that, then it's just a basic string chart after that. We should that. just do the melody. Just the melody. I wonder if you could write something quick, like just tra transcribe just for melody. low strings? For string violas and cellos Just playing. give everybody the melody, and then we just do it in harmonics, and I'll do it in a slow tempo, like ordinary equals 50. Julian will have to do it because then we can, I can take the second violin part which has it and just copy it for a button. Yeah, clean right after. Why do you do that? Let's do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. Uh, so, what, which copy. one is names? We have uh, two more gestures and then we got, um, and we have, um, they're all little cues. And we have to do the uh, 3 and 13. This last one? I'd like you to be here for 3 and 13. That's the, the scaffolding fight. Because I'm afraid, um, I mean, you listen, I'm afraid. Um, you may have a little too much fun with it. You think? What do you have? Like a lot of disco horns and strings. No, you have horns and strings? Yeah. I think horns are not going to work, do you? Yeah, well, you'll have to hear what you used. What happened? Did, did you record it or you will? I ran it through it before and I wasn't sure I wanted you to be here. Yeah, yeah. But I think we should do it um, after lunch. Yeah. Do you think the horns are too much of a statement? Um, I mean, the, the way they're used now is, um, I think it might be too fun. Thank you. Too fun? Yeah. Like, too fun to listen to? Too funky. Too, too funky. Yeah. Yeah. 
over the horns, and the, the horns aren't really funny. Yeah. No, that's got to be Batman. <laughs> the TV series, you know? Now, do you think that, uh, but do, do you have the strings? Do you have, I have strings playing in it. That, uh, like like so, cello or? Yeah, yeah. What I'll do is, um, I mean, I... That, that will work. Yeah, we can just test it, pick out the, uh, the horn stuff. And the, and the strings are long. It'd be thing. fun to hear it because I'm really kind of curious. I'll do it. But, it, uh, but I, I think it'd probably work. Let's, That's why let, I want you to be let's here. hear the words. I was too timid to do that on my own. Yeah. No, I'd be, I'd be afraid about that. <laughs> for this stuff. Of course. For my next film. <laughs> First section, if we could have it uh, much quicker. The, the no, 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 let me let me do it. Uh, yeah, uh, hold on, Marco, he's on drugs. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Marco, listen to me. Yeah. Only to me. Don't listen to what he's insane. He has been masturbating for the last five minutes in a corner, <laughs> whispering your name. <laughs> what I need, Marco, is just the wooden element that sounds like a spidery element. If you could do a quick rise and fall. For when the for you know for like an isolated reaper or the reaper climbing the wall or something like you know a really quick one up and down. Are you just talking about the wood block or the strings too? Uh, it was it was just whatever just the, just the wood block going not the strings uh, or, um, whatever the fuck you call that thing that they used to play. <laughs> Let's do the whole thing one more time um, before we start. I'd like to get just the uh, opening wood block stuff. And Bob has been master reading my own. Uh, <laughs> solo. Just do a little crescendo in the window. Do it a couple of times. And then uh, the same page. Well, three in the place. Nobody play after the down to 38. I'll um, the uh, fucked up shit. All right. You just there we go. You ready? Yeah. It's crazy.
one more and more active. If you can. Uh, one more, a little more. Another time, a little longer. More active. More active. Yeah, more active. One more, Marco, please. One more. One more. I'm still running. Yeah. Everyone. There are many moments in the post-production of a movie where you feel uh, the movie takes a big step. You know, it's a bit like building a house and coming one week and you see all the foundation and all that. But when you see the walls up, you go, "Oh, it's a house." And that happens to me with when I when I change from hearing a temp, even if it's the temp of the score, to hearing the score itself. I go like, "Oh, wow, it's a movie." Let's get another one that's a little, it was a little loose and uh, we can pull back on the flutes. At the end? Yeah. You guys can just spin your window a little bit. I don't think vampires exist as they are portrayed in, in the mythology and the, and the lore of movies and, and novels and literature and so forth. If they do, I apologize. But if I, I don't think they exist, but I think that it's great. I don't find it terrible that someone just decides to leave that role. And, you know, as long as there's no harm to the third person and they buy their blood properly, you know, it's like, you know, we all live a fantasy. I mean, I, I think I am a director. 
you know? So what's the difference between me thinking that or being a vampire? It's an exactly, it's probably more elaborate a paranoid fantasy to be a director than to be a vampire. So, you know, God bless you all and enjoy it. Enjoy it while it's legal. <laughs>